another edition of Data Center Pulse. I'm Dean Nelson, and today with me I have Mike Lewis, who's the Director of Mission Critical Engineering for eBay, and I have James Monaghan, who is the Principal at California Data Center Design Group. Welcome, guys. Thank you. So we're going to be talking about the uh, modular data center RFP uh, that eBay put out through datacenterpulse.org. And so you guys have been diving into proposals for the last five solid days. Yes? Exactly. And this process actually started back in January with the first cut of the RFP for what we wanted to do with the design in Phoenix, with, mm -hmm. the, with the data center that we were going to put in the warehouse there. Mm -hmm. So through the, through the last few months, we were able to refine that RFP, really make sure that it, it included what we wanted to build in a modular, flexible data center space, not given a lot of space and given the constraints of the warehouse that was already designed and under construction. Yeah. So and that was published in on the 7th of July okay. to a small group of initial uh, firms. And you, you had eight originally, yes. right? But those were hand-selected and the process itself was we would go pick people and say, you guys can bid on an RFP. Yes. Right. It was more of a traditional process. They were generally companies that we had used before have known in the business. Yeah. Those were the initial ones that got the RFP. So we decided that we're going to do this differently and basically publish it externally to anybody who wanted to participate. And we were very open about the schedule, also the scorecard, exactly. correct, which you guys actually developed. Yep. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Well, we looked at several things in like the scorecard. Uh, one of the main, like obviously in a project like this where it's a competition and it's open design, the majority of the points, 55% of the points actually went for the design. And then we went and looked at other aspects, companies that were, were really looking to the future and using technologies like CFD and, and BIM and Revit. And then also we looked at the companies themselves, like, you know, are they like a well-known data center design, you know, firm? Have they built data centers in the past, their ability to execute? Mm -hmm. And then their cost, obviously, in pricing to finish the job, both the, the design portion and the construction portion. Okay, and the design itself, I mean, what we're trying to accomplish in the RFP is pretty simple. Well, it's actually complicated, but uh, we want multiple temp waters, air, multiple configurations, multi-tier, right? Yes. right? So everything from containers down to individual racks. We've got both spaces in there. Exactly. And then... Um, which, which for an engineering firm is not the easiest thing to do. Yeah. So it was really interesting seeing all the submissions come in and seeing each individual firm's take on how, that they were, how they were going to solve a problem. Right. And in the previous episode, you guys saw that we uh, shared out some of the vision around you know, what we wanted to do in the design and why. And so that helped the different companies, and I think we want to talk about how many did this um, in a second, but it helped them understand what we're trying to accomplish. And so I think we were very forthcoming and open on, on how they could win, right? And exactly. also that we were not restraining them on how they would design. Exactly. Certain constraints were physically limited, right? right? But it's really up to them, and that's the beauty of it, is to have these companies come back with that answer. So why don't we talk about um, the submissions themselves? Sure, we had 38 companies that actually applied to receive the RFP. Okay. And then were, were approved? Out of, those, out of those 38, 36 of those were approved. Okay. Um, during that process, we had 10 no bid before the, before the bid final so date. They dropped out of the They dropped out before yeah. the submission date. And then after that, we actually had 17 companies actually present submissions to us uh, as of last Friday, the 20th. Right, and, and also, wasn't there a couple that combined? Yeah, we had several companies that uh, combined. Um, be, you had an uh, architectural firm who joined with an engineering firm. Right. Um, you had several product vendors who applied for their own, but then you know figured out they might not have the horsepower. You know they obviously don't have the ability to stamp drawings locally, yeah. um, so they actually pe teamed up with uh, construction. Some of them joined up with um, design build firms. More of them uh, partnered up with uh, traditional, you know, uh, AE firms and. Uh, you know, uh, actually, it's kind of interesting when you come to the final. Who actually met it to the final? Because yeah. uh, it's not your, it's not who you, who you who you would expect it to be. You know, yeah. and you know it was very very interesting. And I just got the overview this morning because they told me to stay out of it, which is a smart thing to do, guys. Um, so they went through and had their rigor in which you actually scored everybody, and the scorecard was published as well. Correct. Right, and the three categories. Correct. Right. Three main categories. We had design. Mm -hmm. We had. You know, first of all, obviously the design, and within that we had multiple items, um, and we really broke it down. It was, it was, a, I have to say, a completely level playing field, right? There was points for, like, what we thought were all the major things. So everyone had the same 
we published the criteria, everyone saw what it was. Yeah. So on the design, we had, you know, the points for that. Then on the RFP submission itself, obviously, if you submitted all the, the, the requirements, you actually got all the points. And then in the very end, um, the, the companies themselves. So it was, a, you know, it really was a complete, play, like, level playing field. It was one of the fairest, there was absolutely, you know, when we scored it up, the, yeah. the best solutions really did come to the top. And the people who really put in the effort yeah. and put care and attention came to the top and, yeah, it was a very, very fair process. And yeah, so it's everything from did you answer all the questions in the RFP right. to, to the innovation and the design yes. to the cost and the ability to deliver it. Correct. Right. Yeah, so very basic stuff, but um, yeah, some people really, really came at it and, and others uh, didn't have all the pieces and it cost them. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah and, and we also declined a number of people afterwards, right? I mean, yes, uh, at, at some point we actually had to cut off respondents to the RFP just due to time constraints. Yeah. And we, we gave everybody a minimum of two weeks to respond to the RFP. Right. So it was actually shut off for two weeks before the 20th. And after, after that RFP was shut off, we probably had to decline 15 different respondents. And it was, that, yeah, Data Center Knowledge them. Data Center Knowledge actually posted an article about it. And so I think that suddenly got it out to a lot more people. So. Exactly. But the beauty of this is, um, this is a, a smaller data center. We're really learning a bunch in this. But, you know, there's further projects after it. And so everybody that came back and said they would like to participate, the next rounds, absolutely. Definitely. Right? Yeah. We've got a great list of people that seem very interested in it, and now they know what the process is, and we can see what the success is in this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about then um, how you went through the five days. So each one of those things and how you, you ended up ranking these. Sure. Um. Actually, we started off looking at at kind of the basics of each one of the submissions mm -hmm. um, and some of the things James talked about, did they submit all the items that they were supposed to, yeah. the strength of the company, the team that they were bringing to the table, the location of the team. Yeah. We looked through all those and then we got kind of an overview of the design. So we didn't want to get into the design right away. Um, so then that gave us kind of a basis of, of kind of the scope and scale of RFPs from, from very good ones and these people put in a lot of effort to, right. to some not as much. Um, after we did that kind of initial first pass analysis, then we spent the last two days going through a detailed analysis of each of the respondents' designs, mm -hmm. uh, the good points of the design, the bad points of the design, what we liked, what we didn't like, yeah. and, and we've got notes on all those designs which we'll be providing as feedback to all the different respondents. And that's important because we're actually going to tell the people what they did good and what they did bad instead of, sorry, you didn't get in. Right, and I think that's very important <coughs> because a lot of times you have companies and you know, you get the feedback and, you know, you mightn't get the full truth, you know, it might be just lost over, but we're really going out in this case to tell people why they weren't selected and, yeah. you know, which is, we deserve, the companies that put the time and effort in, you know, yeah. we, they deserve to know why they didn't make it and we're going to tell them the truth and, um, yeah, so. Yeah, and I think, again, we really appreciate that people did really put some, some serious time into this. Yeah. And, and that's what we were looking for. And, um, you know, the great part is there's, it's a big community. And lots of people are going to look at this and say, who was on that list? So I'd like to know what they actually submitted. And then that company can go dress directly to the, the person that's interested to, in it. So we're going to be publishing this up as well with the video, uh, the ones that actually said they would like their name published out. Um, and then we're also going to be announcing the six at the end of this video. Okay, um, so now we've got all the stuff reviewed, the scores. Um, you went and picked how many? We picked six. Six finals? Six companies to be interviewed, correct. Okay. And it was actually interesting, of the original eight that we sent the RFP out to, out to, three of those actually made the final six. So then that leaves three out of the remaining people that, that applied to the RFP since we made it public that yeah. actually were chosen as part of the final six. But if we had done more of a traditional process, we wouldn't have gotten designs from them. Right. So of the companies that responded, um, of those six, it was actually quite interesting because one of the companies that responded, a very small company, was actually one of the best applicants, and we wouldn't have known that. We wouldn't have got their ideas, and they actually provided, you know, a very nice design, very innovative design, very yeah. simple, and we wouldn't have got that if we hadn't gone through this process. So that proved the value of this right. process. And and so that's the the cool thing. I, we now have more people participating, more innovation. Um, but the the key is, you took what was submitted, you didn't go back and ask questions and get clarifications and everything else, it's, it's on the merit of what they submitted. Correct. 
Very picky. So it's a level playing field, nobody's Correct. getting any other special benefit in this, and then you scored it based on the scorecard that was published. Correct. Okay, so now we pick those six, right? Yes. And the next steps in that? Are they, so now we're going to have an interview process starting after Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to interview these six firms, it's probably going to be an hour and a half to two hour interview. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we have their technical submissions, we understand their designs. Um, so, you know, there's going to be an element of, of, um, how, of their technical presentation, but what we're really looking at is how these companies, you know, because a couple of companies have joined up and made it into the se selection, how are they going to deliver? How yeah. is the PM, we want to hear from the PM on how they're going to deliver the project to us. Right. Okay. So. Um, also, the feedback to them, they're going to have a week to really think about the feedback and adjust accordingly to whatever it is they're going to present. Correct. Exactly. Yep. And all of them have the same same kind of feedback. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Regardless of what score it is. But we're also sharing the score with them. They see where they're kind of falling. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now, let's announce the finals. So let's do them in alphabetical order. Sure. Why don't you tell us what kind of firm they are? Okay. Okay. So the very first one was uh, DPR. Uh, they are designed by the contractor. And, okay, great. And then the second was? EDI. Okay, and what kind of firm are they? They're an a and &E firm. Or no, EDI are actually a technology. They're actually a technology consulting firm, I believe, but they okay. partnered up with an architecture firm out of Boston called uh, Winter Street Architects, mm -hmm. and they used engineers out of um, down near Baltimore, I think, called uh, AHA Engineers. Great. Okay. Uh, the third one was uh, Clean Stubbins. King Stubbins are an A and E firm. This was delivered out of their San Francisco office. Okay. And uh, fourth, McKinstry. They're a design build firm. Excellent. Uh, fifth was RTKL, who are a traditional A and E outfit. Okay. And the final, Scansco, who's okay. a design build construction firm. Okay. And uh, again, all in alphabetical order, not in order of priority of or how they scored. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Great. So, um, any other lessons learned in this? I mean, if you were to wrap this up in just a couple sentences, how was this process? I think it's been a fair and interesting process that took a very difficult and complex set of requirements, mm -hmm. flexible, modular, scalable, air, water cooled, multi-tier. Multi yeah. I've, I've never heard of a facility being designed such as that before. It took a very complex set of requirements, and we got to see a number of firms answers to those requirements was a very interesting process. Yeah, and I would echo that as well, the technology, uh, the innovation that people used, um, to, you know, few, the next generation data center, um, what, what it's going to look like. These companies, you know, put the thought and made a serious effort. Our requirements were not easy. Mm -hmm. They were not easy to requirements to, to make, and these companies, um, they went up, you know, there was some serious innovation there. And, like Mike, Mike said, it was very interesting to see, um, and I think that was the, the you know, big takeaway for me. It, it was pretty cool to see that. Excellent. And it was a fun process? Yes. A lot of work, I'm sure. Yes. But yeah, it, it was, was so cool, cool right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. Yeah, this is like getting paid for, for playing. Um, okay, so you do this this way again? Yes. Do you think it was a benefit versus the previous yes. ways we've been doing Definitely. it? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Excellent. Okay. Well, thanks, guys, and thank you for watching another episode of Data Center Pulse, and stay tuned for more updates.